Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video, we're going to look at stairs. Once again, we're going to model winder stairs. Ooh, winders. I bet you don't do those every day, but you're going to know how to do them. Okay, before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, that's hopefully why you're here, then please demolish that like button. Helps me out a lot. Also, please subscribe. That helps as well. Okay, this is a number of videos now that we've looked at specifically stairs, and that's perfectly fine. I would highly encourage that you look at all of those videos prior to this one, but it's not totally critical. Uh, we will not cover some things we've covered in those, but we will cover modeling winder stairs, which is kind of fun because it's different, at least for me. I'm not so much in residential, so I'm <laughs> really not doing winder or even circular stairs for that matter. So getting into it now, let's go to stairs. All right. And with that, we will simply see that we have an L-shaped winder and a U-shaped winder. Um, you'll notice as we end up modeling them that they both perform very similarly, um, at least at the beginning. So I'm going to click on L shape winder and we can do an L first. But before I do that, I want to direct you over here to the left. And these are things we have covered in previous videos where we looked at instance and type parameters of stairs. But uh, just know, I'm not going to change any of this, but just know that my base level is one and top level is two. And particularly, but the desired stair height, which is the distance between level one and two, is 10 feet. So that will yield 18 risers. So just kind of know that. Um, if I were to draw a basic stair, we obviously need to draw all of our stair treads and basically put them where we want them. Whereas let's now click the L shape winder. I click this and boom, all of a sudden it's like it's done. Now, I don't, I don't dislike this because Look, it's essentially done. Now, after I click, I can actually start making edits, which I will likely need to make because uh, this is probably not what you need. Maybe it is if it's just perfectly in a corner like this and uh, you have equal number on each side, like that kind of thing. You know, so let's click. And we have clicked. And, you know, it's not bad. You know, it works. Uh, it's pretty good. But now we need to actually look at everything that we can edit. So if I click on this, just notice it's one stair run. It's not, there's no landing here. So it's just going to be one run. And that's very important to be aware of because there's, there is no landing. Obviously I could make another run, another stair run connected to it. And in that case, I could make a landing, but just looking at this L shaped winder in of itself, there's no landing. Okay. So the first thing we want to look at is obviously our stair run is three feet. That's going to be default. Um, but looking over here at the instance parameters, uh, a lot of these are the same. So these first few sections, the constraints and construction are essentially the same as any other stair, but we've got a winder style. Look at So this, these, this whole section here called winders is, you guessed it specifically for winder stairs and it is instance property. So we can edit this per stair. In this case, I'm selecting the stair run itself. So we have the first, which is winder style and balanced. So balance is basically its attempt to even out all of the tread lengths or tread depths, which obviously you'd kind of want to do, but you can do that or you can choose single point. And so they're all, they will all be directed at a single point, which I guess we'll see if we have more control over, but you can see how they change. So they're all pointing to some magical point over here. Now, I can't, I don't have control over that at all. Uh, so just know you have two options. <laughs> do you want them pointed at a magical point or do you want them to be balanced? Now, I would say balance is probably more likely to be used, but hey, you know, whatever. We will just start with and continue with balance. So looking at the next parameter here, we can see that this says inside walk line offset. So like, what? what are we talking about here? Well, if I hover over this, obviously it's a built-in parameter and it gives me this four inch, four and a half inch of ish value. And so this has to do with code. And again, I will, I will save all code items for a future video. So be sure to check out that. Um, but what is this going to do? Well, the inside walk line offset. <laughs> 
well, right now, it's basically like, where is the walk line for winders? There's a particular code with winders that uh, infers and implies that you have uh, a walk line and that it starts at some point on the inside. And that's mainly because you get to where you can't really step on some of these winders because it's so thin. So I can start to edit this a bit and really nothing happens. Uh, I can even make this kind of ridiculous, a whole foot. Uh, it's all based on just code and calculation. So I'm for the sake of this, I will undo it and just know that it, it does not impact the construction of the stair or modeling of the stair in this case, which is what we care about. But here we go, minimum width on inside boundary. So that's important. So this number, I don't, again, I'm not sure, this is automatically you know, implied by, you know, the height of between levels and the number of treads and all of that. So this is just some sort of result. It also has to do with the winder style. Uh, right now it's two and almost three quarters, like maybe three quarters. And that means the minimum width on the inside portion of any of these winders will be only as low as that. In this case, we can clearly see it's right here. <laughs> um, not really something I want to try and step on, nor do I want to have this constructed for someone else to step on this. So we have a little more control over this. So maybe I put this at six inches and we can see how the winders respond to that. So the minimum distance in uh, the very inside is now six inches. And I feel more comfortable with that if I were to, you know, if I were to have to model and construct a winder stair. Now this can get crazy. And if I put this at one foot, the stairs going to break because all of my treads are set to 11 inches uh, by default. So just kind of know that. So I like the six inches because it's not unreasonable uh, but it's definitely small, and this is very much not commercial, uh, still residential, but, you know, that's what it is. We're okay with that. Now, I will go back to winder style and put single point, and you'll notice that also uh, I have lost the control of the minimum width inside, which it, give, it actually gives me a solid number, and that is 9 inches. So basically, if you want a more solid number across most of them and you want to point to a single point, great, do that. But again, for the sake of this, let's do balance, keep it at six inches. Now this is kind of fun. I can fillet on corner and this corner is going to be the inside corner. And I can just check this box and it's going to take this default value. And I'm again, I'm not sure how it can, comes up with this other than based on everything to do else to do with the stair, but that's okay. But I do have control over it, which is great. So I can put in, you know, six inches, it'll get a bit smaller. I can put in a whole foot and it'll get a bit bigger. Obviously this is just the radius. So this is kind of fun. I can even get really crazy with it and you can see how it responds. And in a way I, I like this, you know, there's a point to where it's too big, obviously right here. <laughs> um, but once I go to the actual run stair width, that's going to be too much. So below that I'm pretty good. Now, again, looks kind of dumb, but there might be an application for this. I will say that. So, uh, the next thing here, I do like this, and this is something that I would highly recommend as a an actual architect who's you know constructing stairs and modeling stairs. This is parallel treads at start and end. So we can see here, I it looks like I have two parallel treads at the start and the end because, well, and I know that I do because of this parameter value being two. So look, if I change this to one, watch this first stair run or that stair tread it is now no longer parallel and that mean and all that means is that it is responding to the curvature of the wind now what's kind of the point of this well if i bring this up more by even to three well this is going to break so what i'm going to do is actually turn this fillet off so we get all the way back here and uh, you will notice once you start playing with this how easy it is to break these stairs, but also logically speaking, uh, I hope to help you understand what to do not to break the stairs. So if I go back to two, we can see the second tread is now parallel and I can go to three and four and you'll notice I could go all the way up to essentially this corner. And now that I have no fillet, I can almost go all the way up to the corner. But again, you'll know as soon as I get too far as it, as in it needs to start winding, <laughs> it will break. So just know that. And so I can go up to five and that's great. I feel more comfortable with this and 
the fact that this is a straight run already, it just makes sense that this is, have these treads be parallel. So I want to do the exact same thing on the other side. And cool, I like this. So that means we get a little bit more drastic wind here, but it's not too drastic because we're still maintaining that minimum width on the inside, which I like. And so I'm somewhat happy with this. You know, like it's okay. I feel all right about it. And then, of course, the stair run width is all the same. Everything down here is everything that we're used to seeing. So I finally want to direct you to the stair itself and some of the push and pulls that we have with the stair. So we are very familiar with this one. And this is the shape handle that moves the treads from kind of the start or the end of the stair. And why did this break? Well, this broke particularly because of my parallel treads at start and finish. So I'll put this back down, maybe three, so we have a little more lenience. And so I can push this and we can see, yep, we have now a, a not an even number of treads on one side or the other. And I can even do this again. And one more time before the stair wants to break. Yep, that's it. So you can see, I could even bring this down to where the parallel treads are one or even zero, even if I bring them down to one, I have a lot more control with how I can manipulate this, you know, like this, I don't like this, you know, but there is definitely an application for having a winder that has you know, initially a tighter corner like that. So this totally works. I'll undo this a few times to get back to our even stare. So I, I like it. It's good. And then of course we have these regular shape handles, which we can use to increase the stair run with. Now I don't like doing this. Um, because it's it's hard to get an idea of what the result will be. And that's because, it. I mean, look at the result. Three, three feet, eight and seven, 256 inch. Like, why? I don't know. I, I want to hard code this. I want to put it in, put in an exact value myself. And with that, I obviously you can do it here. We've seen that before. But I do want to draw your attention to these squares. <laughs> and these squares you won't see in other types of stairs, only the winder stairs but they are in a way a shape handle and let me show you what they do well they basically do the same thing that we were doing earlier and they are going to manipulate the number of treads that we have on one side versus the other but uh you know just kind of know that and we can see that yeah i can push it too far and things like that but um just know for this type of a winder they're basically doing the same thing as the other shape handles at the the top and the bottom of the stair that will change when we get to the U-shape winder in just a second. Okay, so the last thing I will point out before I bore you to death with these L winders is that when we go to the edit the type, it, it is the exact same type of stair, which I love this. It's kind of the point. It's whenever you start in Revit, and typically speaking, most of the templates you use, or at least I would hope, are going to use the same stair run type for all the stairs that you could model in Revit. It just doesn't make sense to you know worry about that in any other way. Like at least start with something that you know. Again, the materials are here. Uh, obviously, all the other tread and riser, everything, all the other parameters that you want to change or keep the same are right there. And I would keep them the same because let's be honest, there's not a lot that we need to do with stairs other than maybe add some materials and whether we're showing risers for a convenient stair, that type of a thing. If that, I mean this is a great opportunity to not have risers if you can pull it off structurally, but cool. So we have a lot more uh, features when it comes to and for options when it comes to editing what these stairs look like than traditional stairs. Uh, now, the last thing I will say is, of course, we can convert this to a sketch. Now, let's say we want to fillet this and we don't want to fillet it two feet six, maybe just 1.5. Okay, looks good. Now, my only problem with this, because I am I'm missing the symmetry that I like to see, is that this outer corner is not filleted. Well, the only way to really achieve that is to convert this to a sketch. Now, I have made a separate video on whether, well, one, you should, but not only whether you should, but how you were to convert, but not only just convert, but actually just model a stair with a sketch instead. And my recommendation there, just to sum that video up, would be to make a stair, convert it, and then you have basically all the bones you need to do what you need to do. So obviously, yeah, I'm going to convert this. And once it's converted, I can't convert it back. 
but you'll you'll immediately see what I'm doing. So obviously I want that radius right there. And all I need to do to make this work the way I want is simply go to offset, put this at three feet. I'll offset this run, trim these together, and then I will make sure that my threads don't don't extend beyond the edge of the stair, of course. So let's make sure that doesn't happen right here. And with that, we will finish the stair. Look, achieved. We have our inch and a half radius on essentially here and then our continu basically continued three foot wide stair run. I love it. Now, again, we've lost the control of essentially everything here, uh, which is too bad because it was a winder. And you'll notice I don't have any options to change this or edit this, whatever. It's just now a sketch, which that's, that's kind of the whole reason why I don't like sketches because I lose all the control that I had with even just a winder had, has a lot out of the box, which is great. So cool. We looked at L winders. Now let's go back to stairs and look at our U and you'll notice again, obviously same 10 feet, 18 risers. Cool. Boom. Look at this. It, you know, I kind of wish there's a part of me that wishes even the regular stairs in Revit would uh, kind of start this way to where it would just maul it all for you. And you could just drop it in really simply based on the level offsets and uh, that you have, because this is a good starting point. It's so easy. If I could just paste, not even paste, but just click once and get my stairs in, that'd be awesome. So anyways, we will click this, but actually before I do that, I want to show you this. So the desired number of risers is 18 and that's just based on the calculations of uh, less than seven inches per riser. And then you calculate that uh, over the 10 feet from level to level. Well, because this is an instance parameter, I can put in anything that I want. Well, in this case, maybe I want to put it in 52. Well, whenever I put in 52, you could see the actual riser height changes to like, it's less than three inches. But what my result is funny. So I, I can do this. I can get all the risers that I want here. So I'm not going to do that because we want to keep this, let's say, close to being normal. So I can just click that and I'm done. So zooming in here. We can see that we have very similar looking things here, of course. Obviously, the constraints and construction are the same with every other stair. But then we have the winder style. Do we want it balanced? Do we want a single point? We can see that when I change this, hmm, my guess is we probably don't want a single point when it comes to the U-shaped winder uh, for obvious reasons because it looks absolutely absurd. Obviously, our supports break and we can revisit this, uh, but I don't like it don't like it at all for obvious reasons. So let's put that back in balance because this is more or less what we would expect to see. And then obviously our minimum width inside, I do like that six inches, but I'm just going to put it there and you can see, eh, it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because I'm literally turning a U. I'm making a U-turn here. And so I have less room to work with. So maybe three inches will work. Yeah, three inches will work. It's a more solid number. It kind of is what it is. This is kind of why I wouldn't necessarily like these types of stairs, but you know, you might have to do this in a residential setting. So we can fillet <laughs> the center here, but I'm actually not going to, because if I even choose this, it's, it's not even going to work because the default is so big. Obviously look at the radius, <laughs> look at the room we have to work with here. So we'll get back to there in a minute. Um, until then the parallel treads that start and end, we, we know what this is because we saw this on the L. But again, this is totally something I would love to do here. And I think I can get away with, oh, probably four, at least four. Yeah, look at that. So that's totally great. It looks better, looks cleaner. Uh, and obviously we can maintain that three inches, of course. And that's fine, looking good. So like I said, everything else is the same. Um, we can change the stair width. If I change it to four, it's too big because of the gap in the middle. And so you might be thinking, what the heck? Well. <laughs> How do we deal with that? Well, um, let's move on to the shape handles because that's where we can find it. So we're used to these and we know what this does. It, it adjusts it up and down, but obviously because I have these parallel set, I'll put it at one and show you what it does. I can start to offset this out and this looks pretty good. You know, I like the way this is working. So yeah, that's uh, nice that we can do something like this. That's really cool. And even with this, you might say, well, 
how would we now get a different distance here in the middle or you know anything else um, and that has everything to do with you might think these but of course this is just the stair width and of course i can this works because i want to move it out but there's a point to where it simply doesn't and like i said before i like to keep this hard coded the actual run width i want to keep it three feet in this case so what how would we get larger uh, area in here well it's going to be these square shape handles and they're going to be based on the location line you could call it of your actual stair run and that's important because i can i can drag these and you'll see the result is similar to what we saw with the the l winder and it does end up compensating you know the number of risers on one side versus the other but it does allow us to get more width where we want it and so i can move some of these back and maybe this will not angle that my goodness maybe we we want to do something like this and then we can drag that out you know we can get more of a the area here that we want which is awesome so like i said before these are based on the stair path and not only just the stair path but the location of where you're placing the stair we saw this this is more pertinent when it comes to modeling normal normal let's say just straight run stairs as opposed to winders or circular stairs um, but where how, how do we change this location well we can do this at the top and the location line is run center well we can put this at the exterior support left and we could see it drops all the way out here so maybe i want to hit some sort of a point out here and decide yeah that you know it's right there is exactly where i want it. and then over here it's like well you know i'm only gonna be able to go so far because i need to keep that that tread so this is kind of the limits of what we get based on the stair not only just the run but also how high we have to work with like i only have 10 feet to work with so that's part of the problem but this does open us up to having more flexibility with the stair width like you can obviously i will break it at a certain point because that's exactly how it works but i have more flexibility here and i can get a giant stair run if i want so with three i want to actually pull this back in and we can now start to fillet this a bit better and you'll notice that <laughs> as to why it might work and that's because we have actual room here to work with which is great so we'll put this fillet on and even the default will work so we can put this up to a foot or maybe even that magical foot and a half that we had on the other stair nope that doesn't work maybe just one and a quarter nope that doesn't work either well we'll stick to one foot which is cool that's great so i like it that's basically everything that we can do again of course this is the same type of stair run same properties and everything which is great so you've seen the different things that you can do with these winders. But finally, the last thing I'll do is, again, convert this one. And we will do the exact same thing that we did with the L winder, but with this type of a stair, the full U. And I'll make sure my offset is three feet. And we'll offset these out, these stair boundaries. Then I can trim all of these boundaries together. And with them trimmed, I can make sure my treads are extended correctly to my boundaries and look at that yeah it works all the same it looks a bit silly to be honest but hey winders look silly of course by themselves without doing this but it does work so now that we have these two winders can i come into this one and kind of in integrate this with a different stair you know like we've added landings or whatever so maybe um i'm gonna draw another run so now let's change this top offset to 10. So basically we're kind of covering two levels, but we only covered one level with this there. So I'm gonna just draw this straight stair run. You can see automatically, it's gonna to wanna to draw that beautiful landing for us. And beautiful is subjective in this case, but regardless, I can, I can have this put in, give me all the treads that I need, and then move this wherever I want. And I have this wonderful landing that's working. And I, I love this because this is a sketch and as much as i don't like sketches it will integrate with stairs that are not sketches in a sense that i can get this beautiful enough looking and functionally working landing an automatic landing because i can always delete this move this around rotate it do whatever i need to do with it and then come back and redraw landing 
because I can click on this one and then that one and that the fact that they're at the same elevation, I'm going to get the landing, which is awesome. That's great. That's a, at least we could do that. Now I will say with the sketch, if you have two sketches and you're trying to do the same thing, it won't work. You know, you have to have a real stare, not and by real, I don't mean just a straight run or something. I mean, not a sketch. <laughs> you can only have one sketch if you're trying to do this. So that's it. I mean, we looked at L winders. We looked at the, the U winders, uh, all the settings that go along with them, which can be, you know, a bit convoluted in the beginning, but it does make sense. And you can, once you play with it for just a couple of minutes, you can start to see that you, you know, what's going to break it, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, besides that, we have looked at everything modeling stairs wise now. So if you haven't looked at other stair videos that I've done so far on modeling other versions or the properties, parameters, whatnot of all the stairs, check that out. In the future, we'll look at uh, actually a full situation as far as calculating stair widths and then just separate video for like kind of the general codes that you need to be aware of for stairs in general. So stick around for those, but that will do it for this video. I hope you learned something if you did please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also subscribe. That does as well. I look forward to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.